Hi everyone, it's Rax. Last Epoch came out about a week ago. Made a beginner's guide for it. A lot of you watched it. Thank you for that. Many people said, Rax, you know the drill. Make us more guides. Keep teaching us. So this guide is going to be more about a couple of end game topics. Because the beginner guide should get you through the campaign, get you started on the monolith. But what happens when you get into the end game? I've noticed some things that have tripped some people up in talking to them in my stream over the last week. And I want to show you some things that I hope will really help you. The two topics we're going to cover today are loot filters, because as you get further and further, you're going to get more items and you're going to get better items. If your loot filter doesn't evolve with you, you're going to get 10,000 items all the time. Your stash tabs are going to be completely full and you're going to have no idea what to do. And the other thing I want to talk to you about is endgame crafting. What do you do when the items actually drop and they make it through your loot filter? How exactly do I have everything organized to make sure that I always have maximum value for everything and I can craft all the legendaries that I want? So let's start with the loot filter. But there is one thing that will absolutely help you tremendously if you can have a basic idea ahead of time. So if we go to Maxwell here, one thing that will help you a lot is if you can have an idea of what classes you would like to play. You might say, all right, well, right now I'm playing a rune master. I'm having fun. Ha ha ha. And you might look through, there's a ton of different build guides. You might look through a ton of these other builds and you might want to say, okay, these one or two also sound really fun. I think I'm going to make those next. If you can plan ahead, then you can tune your loot filter to be looking for all that loot ahead of time. Then you can have a massive advantage. It's very difficult if you say, well, I don't know what I'm going to play. I'm just going to pick up everything. That makes it very difficult. So, for example, let's say I go here and uh, let's say I want to make um, a warlock. I'm going to make a bleed warlock. That's what I'm going to play. And then I'm like, all right, well, I want next character I want I make. It's going to be a little bit different. Maybe I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go Sentinel. I'm going to go Nova Hammerden. I love Diablo too. I want to be a Hammerden. And let's say you pick that. Then you can open the two guides, and you don't have to read the guide. You just got to. Take a little peek here. You just got to peek at what are they suggesting for these things? What kind of legendaries are they suggesting? What kind of, I'm looking at the base here. It's a wand, for example. It's a wand and it's a shield. Okay, I'm just making a little note of that. And then you can look at the idols and say, okay, okay, this is an acolyte only idol with health and health. Okay. Chance to apply damned, chance to bleed, apply damned and bleed. Okay, you make a note of that. You do the same thing in the Nova Hammer. And you go up here, just take a look. We're going to use, a, okay, one-handed axe, all right, and a shield, so shield on both, all right. And then we go to the idols, and we take a look at what we need. Make a little mental note. So with that in mind, that's really going to help us make a loot filter. I thought about making one fresh and starting it from scratch, but I think I'll use the one that I have here. I simplified it as much as possible. We're going to start at the bottom. Remember, any rule at the top supersedes anything below it. Okay? So what are we doing at the bottom here? At the beginning, we're going to hide everything in the game, all of it. And you'll notice in this loot filter, I actually do just completely hide set items. I don't even look at them anymore. The reason why is, first of all, I pretty much got all the set items. The second reason is set items suck. There's only like one or two that have really any use in the game. You can pick them up if you want, but they're just not that important. EHG just needs to buff sets. They don't need to be Diablo 3, 10,000% damage, but sets kind of suck. Anyway, here we go. At the bottom, we just hide everything. I'll show you the, show you the rule. Just hide everything. Okay, no problem. Now we're going to tell the loot filter what we want to see. Experimental affixes, you see those little like diamond contraptions that are concealing an enemy. You click it, a mage comes out, you kill it, and then you get those special weird items that look kind of not quite purple, but like a dull purple that have the experimental affixes on them. Those can be valuable for a lot of different reasons. I need to make a different video on that, but we want to see the experimental affixes. So we show that. Now we go to the idols, okay? And initially when I started, what I did was I picked all the nice affixes 
And I just said, show me any idol that has an affix. It could be health, it could be resistances, you know, anything logical that you think you might want. I went with that. But then I was getting too many idols to drop. I was filling up pages and pages and pages. And I was like, all right, I need to be a little bit more strict. So then I said, I need the idols to drop with two things on them. And then I went in and I started to pick some things. So for general idols, health, physical res, health, thought, eh, health regeneration is not that important. Mana, armor, all the resistances. You can go through here. And I know you might be new. You might not know exactly what's good, but kind of just use logic here. And another thing, by the way, I should have said this at the start of the video. This isn't the end all be all loot filter. I don't know everything. I don't know everything about the game, but I have been meticulously tweaking this loot filter to try to find a nice balance. Everything that drops is useful for me in some way, somehow, but I don't want to see any garbage anymore. I don't have time to pick up thousands and thousands of items. It's at, at a certain point, it becomes too inefficient when you get far enough. Bleed, Ignite, Poison, Shock, Ward Retention. Some of these are pretty good. So you can go through here and kind of logically pick the decent affixes. Do you remember how we looked at the guide and we had a basic idea of one or two builds that we would like to play? You go back in here and you say, for the Acolyte Idols, I want it to have health. And I want it to have, what was it? I thought there was more than one. Okay, there's only one for Acolyte. And the Sentinel has two of them. The throwing attack and the chance to shred armor. Actually, I already know this is wrong. Wasn't there a chance? We wanted the chance to apply damned, right? Yeah, we missed that. Actually, there was another one. I don't know how these got unchecked. Let's go back. We're fixing it live. This is a perfect example. Um, so chance to apply damned and chance to bleed on physical spell hit. Another thing you can look is, look at the top, look at the name. Baneful, that's the prefix, grand bone idol of slicing. Slicing, okay. So you can go back into last epoch and type slicing. Boom. I don't know how those got unchecked. I had them checked. Must have unchecked them for some reason. We're fixing the loot filter on the fly. Now I have not only all the great general stuff that drops, but now I have the class-specific stuff that I know I want to play. And then you might watch a, a YouTube video, you might watch a Twitch stream, or you might get an idea. You want to know what? I'm going to make a mage. Open up the guide, check the idols, and check the things that you're looking for. That way you can have them and farm them ahead of time if you're sharing your, uh, if you're sharing your stash with your other characters. So what I've done here is I said you need at least two of these to happen at the same time. And then what I've noticed is now I don't get a complete avalanche of idols, but when I get them, this is actually my only page of idols, and I've played a lot, but now my idols are pretty good. Vitality with poison res. Vitality poison res, vitality physical res, bleed chance with necrotic res. You get the idea. The quality of the idols went up, and I don't have to sift through a bunch of garbage. Also, we're starting to get some of the class-specific ones that I might use for other characters. Okay, so that's idols. Now here comes the really, really cute part. Okay. So here's how I would advise you to think about it. So affixes have seven tiers, right? Now, there are some affixes that are class-specific. Okay? Acolyte has 57 class-specific affixes. Okay, the mage has 57 as well. Sentinel 51. We can all read, right? So these particular affixes I find are more rare. You're not going to find them very often. But remember, if you watch my beginner guide, there are two kinds of affixes that you are looking for. One are the ones that you literally want for your build. You, oh, in this build, I want minion damage and spell power and int. So I'm just going to select my loot filter just to find those. No, don't do that. Because of the other thing that you want, you want affixes that are rare, that you can't find very often. Because sometimes when you go to craft, 
it requires you, for example, if you want to chaos a bad affix that you don't want that's rare off, you have to have one of its shards in order to use the chaos. So that means if you're bankrupt on all the rare affixes, you can't craft. That's what it means. So how do I solve that with my loot filter? Well, the first thing I did is I said recolor any of the items that drop for that are class specific. If they're class specific, recolor them. Doesn't happen too often, but it happens enough. And when they drop with that color, then I know that I want to either shatter or remove them to start to build my bank for all of the different classes. Once again, if you are sure that you're only going to play Acolyte and Sentinel, because you're going to play Warlock and Paladin, you could skip these. But I play this game all day long, so I'm going to check all five, because I don't really know. And I want to start building my bank right away. And that's going to be very helpful for me. Now, let me just show you something for demonstration purposes. I'm just going to move it up here. But I want to show you what it's like for me when I'm running through Echoes. Let's just pretend that my whole inventory was full of echoes. I, I played for an hour, and it, or excuse me, full of exalts, right? So I run through, I play for an hour. This is what I do. I take all of my exalts, and I don't put them in my stash. I actually drop them on the ground. I hold shift, and I right-click every item. This is telling me a lot right now. The stuff that is purple, but not capitalized, is a tier 6 exalt that I want. The capitalized ones are tier 7 of something that I want. So these are really godly. And the, the one I was just showing you, the orange, has a rare affix that I want to shatter for. So if I click it, now a lot of times they aren't exalted. That's why I put it under, I normally put the thing underneath, but I don't have an example, so that's why I slid it up there. But just for an example, once I see, once I drop them all on the ground, I grab all the oranges, and then I shatter them, or I remove them. Look, it has a very rare affix that I only have five of, but I've got a ton of all the other ones. So maybe I will remove and try pray that I hit the T6 shared as physical. Bricked it, bricked it, there we go. And then from there, I just throw it on the ground. And it won't even, sh shouldn't even show up anymore. Actually, why is that showing up? Is that void res considered rare? Why is that even showing up? Oh, huh. I actually don't know. Is void res considered rare? Well, that's a weird one. We'll have to look at that later. But why is that there? Anyway, you pick up the other ones, and then you would throw them back in your stash. Okay, so all these would go into your stash. Actually, I genuinely don't. Maybe someone in the chat, someone in the YouTube comments is going to know, why is this showing up? I hid, I hid every single magic item. Huh. Okay, well, that's, that's strange. I don't know why that's happening. Anyway, the video continues. Um, okay, so that's the idea of this recolor shatter it or remove it to get those rare affixes. Now we have to deal with exalts. Now, here's what people are saying. They say, well, Rax, if you get so many exalts to drop, why don't you just hide all the tier six exalts and just keep the tier seven exalts? I would not recommend that you do that. Tier seven exalts, even with the circle of fortune that are all the way at level nine, are, they're still pretty rare. You still want to keep some of the tier six exalts, I would say until you have at least 20 tabs of exalts. But even then, I don't even know if I would get rid of T6. I'll explain more on this in a moment. But let's start with the T6 exalts. So one thing that you'll notice is I have 328 affixes of tier six, and I'm showing 387 of tier seven. Okay. And the reason for that is you should be a little bit pickier with tier six. Because ideally, when we're making the godly items, you would have tier seven of the affix that you really want. Or if you're lucky enough, you would have a double exalt. 
So the logic here is exactly the same as what we did for the idols. One time you would go through and you would look at what are the really, really super awesome stats that could drop as an exalt that might be good for me. So a lot of my classes use dex and intelligence and all attributes. Uh, maybe strength is another one that you can add, but I haven't really needed much strength. Again, you can go to the guide. Let me show you this for demonstration purposes. You can always go to the guide, and then when you go down at, to the gear, you can look at the best in slot gear and look at what Lizard has chosen to absorb into his uniques. Well, he wants cold res, percent health on this. He has physical damage over time, freeze rate multiplier, chance to ignite. Um, you get the idea. You can look through it. If you have no idea what might be good, look at the best in slot gear and look at what the guide rider is choosing to slam into the uniques. If you didn't watch my beginner guide, you have a unique item with legendary potential and it absorbs the affixes of an exalted item. So having exalted items with the affixes that you want is required to make the best gear, if you did not know that, okay? So pretty much all I did was go through and look at everything that I might want. So for example, maybe since we're doing hammered in, throwing here might be a problem. Maybe I want throwing damage, and that's a mistake. And I should be keeping some throwing things for my paladin. You're constantly editing it here and there and here and there. Another thing that I notice is my falconer died. He died at 99.5. And I'm not going to make another bow falconer. I have no use for this bow stuff anymore. So I should uncheck this. So bow should probably go out and throwing might go in for my paladin. You can tinker it to whatever you need. I'm just giving you the ideas in your mind of what you might want to do to create it custom for yourself. It's really not that hard to make. Okay, and then you go damage types. Well, one of my guys, I think both of them do physical damage. Elemental damage is kind of like a generic thing in case I want to play anything else. Most of them do physical damage. And then crit, crit, damage over time, damage while channeling. I'm not even sure that I need damage while channeling. I guess we kind of channel a little bit on the Warlock um, with one of our skills, but you can go through and customize it. You always want to have health check. You never uncheck these ever because health is so godly for everything in the game. And you get the idea. But remember, these are the tier six affixes. You should be much more picky here than on tier seven. On tier seven, you really need to open up practically everything in the game. Okay, I have got practically everything checked except for stuff that I am almost certain that I will never use. Okay, so tier seven, you kind of want to open the floodgates. If you don't want to mess with tier seven at all, you could just show every tier seven affix and that would be fine. But I wanted to filter some of it out to try to bring the amount of loot that I'm getting down. Okay? And you want as many of them as possible. Show all double exalts, every single item that has two exalted things. Show it to me no matter what. They're very rare, so that's not a big deal. And show every unique item. That's the structure of a, a pretty great loot filter for the end game. It's going to filter out a lot of the bad idols. It's only going to... Uh, there's one thing I forgot to show you, by the way. One critical thing about these orange things when you're, you're um, designing the rule just for salvaging them, you need to set um, a minimum tier for them. Don't just say, oh, show me every single one of the class-specific things that drop ever. Then they're going to drop all over the ground. Set it to a minimum of like tier four. That way you can remove or shatter it and actually get some value out of it. You don't want to shatter every single class-specific affix at T1 or T2. Again, if you're seeing too few of these and you want more, lower this to a Tier 3. You'll see more items. If you're seeing too many items and you're mad, switch it to a 5. I think 4 feels real good. Try 4 and see how that helps you. 
Okay, so this is the basic structure of a lute filter and how you could kind of customize it. Look at the guide. Look at the bases that they want. Like, let me show you one other thing. Let me show you another way that you can customize this. Okay, let's say I just started playing and, uh, well, for whatever reason, I don't have a good wand. And let's say I read the guide and Lizard says, these crystal wands are, are the best base. And this is exactly the wand that you want. And you want either exalted physical damage or damage over time. Okay, perfect. New rule. Recolor. I like pink for whenever I want to get real excited. Pink. God, the internet's going to clip that and use that out of context. That's for sure. All right. So we have pink. And we have item type. One-handed weapons. And we want wands. Boom. Subtype. Lizard told me crystal wand is the best. Okay. Go down here. Crystal wand. Boom. Remember, we want it to have fizz and damage over time. So add a condition. I want you to have an affix. Oops. Affix. And I want either damage over time. Is it? What happened? Damage over time. Oh, I see it. It has a one by it. Okay. Not elemental damage over time, damage over time. Or I want you to have physical damage. Okay. And then advanced. And I only want you to show me a crystal wand that has one of these affixes. Let's say that it's more or equal to six. Done. Now, if the weapon that I need drops, and by God, my weapon sucks. I need a new one. It's going to recolor crystal wands with those two affixes that are greater than or equal to six tiers. Okay? So you can customize it a bit. If you're looking for something very specific, you need it direly. Even if you need it for slamming. Oh, I need a ring with tier seven cold res, tier seven cold res to slam it into uh, this ring I just found. Okay, you can add a rule to recolor pink, emphasize, and I want it to be a ring. So we go, it's an accessory, it's a ring, no problem. And I want it to have tier seven cold res. Well, let's just say, let's just say it just needs to be um, exalted. Actually, the exalted wouldn't work because. It could be an exalted item with cold res. So let's do it the way I did it last time. Let's go affix, cold resistance, boom, done. And it needs to be uh, more or equal to six. Done. Did I pick the right? Okay, I picked the right thing on the wand too. There we go. Now it's going to show me the wands and the rings that I need. And then when you find it, delete the rule. Can mess with it. Can mess with it all day long. Um, here's another thing that you can do. If you have like, if you have a bunch of exalts in your stash, and then you're going through and let's say you're shattering them, and you say, oh, uh, okay, these boots had increased cooldown recovery speed but I don't care about that. I don't want that at all. And you check by holding control and alt, and you see it's T7. Let's use a different example. Let's use, is there any of these not T7? Let's use this one, for example. Physical penetration with bleed. I don't want that. Problem. Go into your tier six rule. Okay. Look at the affixes, and you say physical penetration with bleed and it's uh, it was one of is it, what was it this one you pick the right one and you uncheck it save okay so you can also as you're going through your items if you see something that your loot filter told you to pick up and you look at it you're like why did my loot filter tell me to pick that up you can edit the rule on the fly then you can test it drop it on the ground and make sure that it's not there anymore that's why it's so surprising that this is here i just Genuinely don't get it. I'm going to have to look at that later. I don't know why that happened. Okay, so that's the first part, loot filters. Hopefully that, hopefully that wasn't just a bunch of rambling. Hopefully that showed you how to construct 
a loot filter specifically for you on whatever classes you might want to play. Now, let me teach you the other super important thing. Critical. Do you see what I'm doing here? Do you see how I have uh, 15 pages of exalts? Do you see how I have so many pages of unique items over and over and over and over? You really don't have a, I'll be honest with you, you don't really have a choice in Last Epoch. You must play like this. You must hoard everything. And you should be spending all of your gold on buying stash tab after stash tab after stash tab. So, for example, I need to buy another one. They're getting expensive. 290. I'm going to spend all my gold on it. I'm going to go here. I'm going to change it. E15, purple. Okay. And then once E14 is full, the reason why I drag the latest one over here is because when you click on a tab, it always opens your first tab. So I drag E14 over here until it's full, and then I'm going to go grab E15 and bring it to the front until it's full, then I'll drag it to the back. And now I have a new lovely stash tab to vomit all of the nice exalts that I have told my loot filter to show me. Now, I said you really don't have a choice. You must play this way. Why? I had a guy today in my chat say, Rax, your stash is crazy. I'm level 95 and I only have one tab of uniques. And then when I, ex or one tab of exalts, when I explained to him how screwed he was, I, uh, I, think he, I think he actually cried. I think there were some tears. So let me help you. Let's go to paint. I think paint will be the easiest way to explain it. So in the end game for most slots, what you want is a legendary, right? You want a legendary. That requires two pieces. It requires a unique with legendary potential, and it requires an exalted item. Okay? Now, how good this exalted item is that you slam into this unique is going to determine how good your legendary is. So what you will find is it, you can get way more exalted items than beautiful uniques with legendary potential, right? So when you have your beautiful exalted item, it's, it needs to have four stats on it. You can't, you can't slam it unless it has four stats. It is always in your best interest to make this exalted item with crafting as godly as you possibly can. Let's say my number one choice is this tier seven affix. And then I crafted up T5 of the second best affix that I want. So this is my first choice. This is my second choice. And when I was crafting, I got really unlucky. This third choice is a bad affix, and it's only T4. And this fourth choice is a bad affix, and it's only T2. Right? But I was finding, I finally found my unique. And it's a very rare unique, and I finally got it with one legendary potential. Well, when you slam it into here, 50% of the time, you're going to get an absolute piece of crap because the crafting did not go well on this particular exalted item. And remember, the exalted item has to match the base of your unique. So if this unique is a staff, you can only slam exalted staffs into it. So let me ask you a question. How many exalted staffs do you have with very, very good starting affixes that are best in slot for your build that have enough forging potential in order for you to make these affixes as well? Godly. Remember, sometimes you get very unlucky. Sometimes you get T5 naturally of a shitty affix. What do you do then? Sometimes you have to use a rune of removal and pray that it hits the T5 affix, and it never does. It always hits the T7 perfect affix and it makes you cry. In the crafting system, there are lots of ways to pump up these exalted items and make them very good. But still, making a godly exalted item 
where all four of them are insanely good for your build is not easy, especially when you have to match the base. So, for example, since I have been hoarding all of these great exalted items, let's just make something up. Let's say, uh, oh, uh, I got this. I got Frostbite Shackles, these gloves, to drop with two legendary potential. It's just a godly drop for me. Now I need to go through and make the best possible gloves I can to slam into it. So look at all these gloves I have. Melee attack speed, that's not good for me. Crit chance, no. Crit chance, no. But look at how many pairs I have, and eventually I'm going to have a cold res. Cold res with hybrid health already on it. Okay, I've already crafted on this. This is actually zero forging potential. But these have three out of the four stats that I want. This has T6 cold res, has hybrid health, and has T5 int. So at least I got 75%. But these frostbite shackles with 2 LP are rare. I'm going to try to find better gloves than this or craft better gloves. So I keep looking. A 106 health with the mana chance to shred armor. Maybe I could craft these and be better. It's possible. Okay. No. No. The throw, this throwing thing, by the way, would be great for my paladin. I'm glad that I kept that one. Damage over time with health. This is looking pretty good. It's got 32 forging potential. Maybe I could do something with these. But here's the thing I want, here's the thing I want you to keep in your, in your mind here. Look how many choices I have. You don't know why I have these choices? It's because I save them. If you shatter them all, when you actually find the GG item, you're not going to have any gloves. And then you're going to have to go farm a perfect pair of exalted gloves. Whereas you might have had a perfect pair drop three times for you already that you didn't keep. So I'm begging you. Spend your money on tabs and fill up your tabs with very good T6 and T7 exalts. That will help you. Another cutie patootie thing that you can do, for example, is so let's say, let's say you're going to make, you say you're going to make a warlock and you're going to make a paladin, right? And you went to look at their guides. The warlocks use a wand, the paladins use an axe, and they both use a shield, right? And let's say you are absolutely sure you're not going to make like a melee character and you're not going to make like a mage, for example. Well, one thing you can do here if you're sure is you can add a rule. You can say hide, and then you can go to item type, and you can just look through and say two handed weapons. None of the paladin and warlock don't use any of these and they don't use a bow. Remember, if you put it at the top, maybe you want to keep the uniques just in case you get the godliest unique from it. But all of these rules, this supersedes all of these rules, and you're not going to get any exalts for these. It won't matter to you because if you're never going to make those classes, at least if you're not going to make them in this cycle, it doesn't matter. It's totally fine. And imagine if I took away all of the two-handed things in my stash. Look at all these things highlighted. Look at all the stash space that I would save. So once you can fully commit to not playing something, you can actually hide it. And that, that will save you a lot, right? Now, when you're first starting out, you might not want to have the loot filter this strict. You might want to shatter some stuff to get some base crafting materials. But I have 15,000 of them at this point. And, um, you know, it doesn't really matter to me anymore. Let me say one final thing, one kind of like different final comment. There is an extremely rare rune. I believe it's called a rune of creation. I've only found one of them ever. And what it does is if you still have forging potential on an item, it copies it. It takes the, what, the item, reduces the forging p potential to zero, and copies it. It's a mirror of Calandra from Path of Exile. This is extremely valuable. Why? Well, let's say I find my best-in-slot chess piece, and it's got um, three legendary potential. It's like a one-in-a-million drop. Well, you, you bet I am going to go through here, and I am going to craft the greatest body armor 
with four godly stats that I can slam into it. And I'm going to pray that I hit the three that I want. But if I make this, and it, at the end of crafting, it has any forging potential left, right before I do the craft, I'm going to use a rune of creation to copy the exalted chest piece. If I make a perfect one, I'm going to copy it. Because if I take it and I slam it together in the temporal sanctum, and I don't get what I want, the next time I find a 3 LP body armor, I have a copy of that exalted item, and I can go again. So whatever you do, I've only found one of these this season. If you find these, be very careful on what you copy. You should copy like a perfect exalt that you made for an extremely valuable item for your build. And then if you brick it, you find the unique, you can go again right away. And you don't have to go through the hassle of crafting a perfect exalt to slam into it again. The message that I would tell you here, the overlying message here is don't or don't underestimate. It's like a double negative. Let me say it a different way. It's harder to make really good exalts than you might think. So you want as many chances as possible to make good exalts when you need to slam them. The way that you do that is by saving them. Save them. Filter out the bases that you don't want. That's fine. If you're sure you're not going to play those classes, no big deal. But that's, that's, that's essentially the end of the video. That's what I wanted to teach you. I wanted to show you the basics of making a uh, loot filter. I wanted to beg you, please, buy stash tabs. All of your gold should be invested into this. Don't spend it in the dungeon to dump your gold. Buy stash tabs. You can sort them. There's a beautiful search function. Start collecting all of the uniques. Even if you don't need them, get two copies of every unique and keep the ones that have the highest legendary potential. Just keep them. You never know what you might want to make. And that, I think, will help you a lot. Let me know if this video helped you or if you thought it was a complete waste of your time. If you like these guides, I will continue to make them. I want you to have a ton of fun in Last Epoch, and I want you to dominate. Thank you.